amounts to is that the uh, justice can be removed from office, and, and fe federal judges have been removed from office for misconduct, malfeasance, and and impeachment. They can be impeached. It's just extraordinarily hard to do that. Usually, uh, the ones the federal judges who've been removed from from uh, appointment have done criminal acts, so it became kind of easy or you know, something quite unethical. But it, it, it has been rare, and ph philosophy alone has never seemed to have been a considered a, a legitimate basis for removing uh, a justice. However, you, if, you're, if you have as much gray on your muzzle as I do, you will recall the impeach Justice Earl Warren campaigns that popped up every so often after he did some other participate in some other outreach. So the the impeachment is a is a uh, a way of removing federal judges. It's just just hard to do. There's a red Corvette with the top down, and it's pouring. <laughs> So if it's yours, I hope you'll go out and take care of it, <laughs> or I will. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What is your Let me, let me, um, the, the question is what do I think about the controversy between uh, the Arizona governor and Obama regarding the new uh, Arizona law. I'm going to take a pass on, on opining on that. Our, our attorney general has filed, oh no, that's a different matter. Uh, uh, I think Michigan, I, I heard somewhere on Fox that Michigan was considering su such a law. I. You know, I, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on, on that sort of thing. There was a way in the back there. Yes, ma'am. The, the question, that's a very good question, and I'm, I'm going to duck it, but I'll answer it in a, in a roundabout way. The question is, what do I think about the Constitutional Convention that is our, our, our Constitution requires, I think, every 17 years that the que 16, I thought it was an odd year, uh, that the uh, question of whether the, there is a, a, a constitutional convention shall be held. And that's on the ballot this year, and the question is, what do I think about that? Let, let me, rather than express my own view on that, ask you whether you believe that it is likely that the convention, if called, will be representative of your values? Will you be the ones who populate the delegates who will decide whether and how to amend our Constitution? Or will it be more uh, representative of values that oppose your own? And let me simply say, our society has in 19, the 1960s, early the turn of the 60s, uh, as our, our, our society was actually a lot more cohesive than it is today. Uh, we are far more fractious, far more uh, atomized uh, than we were then. That's, some of that's a good thing, some of that's not so good. And that's the, that's the environment in which we're, we will, if we have a convention, we will be uh, uh, debating that, that convention. So I think it's really a question of whether you think your values are likely to survive a 21st century Michigan con, -con. Yes, sir. No, he threatened to do so. A switch in time saves nine was the expression. The question was, I believe Roosevelt increased the number of justices. 
that was only a threat. It was sufficient to back the court down so that it stopped opposing the, uh, the New Deal um, uh, policies of the, of the Roosevelt administration. There's still a possibility. Yes. Uh, there, there's very, if you look at the Constitution, there are very few explicit constitutional requirements for the federal judiciary. Almost everything is subject to congressional legislation. So you can change the number of justices. You can withdraw jurisdiction from the court. So, and you can't, but you can't expand it beyond that. The Constitution says it has. But it, it's shockingly limited. And that's because they really didn't think this could be a very dangerous branch, how wrong they were. Why not? In the back, yellow. If the president decides to govern by executive, by the office of the president, what has the Congress done? The question you've asked the political question. If if the president chooses to to govern by executive order, what does the Congress do? Heck, if I know. I mean, I I I don't. I mean, that's beyond my competence as a jurist. I mean, I have views as a person, but they're kind of irrelevant to what I do as a jurist. Yes, sir? We read the Fifth Amendment. It says, nor shall private property be taken from public by just compensation. So, for instance, let's say you've got the Major Species Act. By that, the owner probably is not allowed to use his property the way he sees fit or wetland. Why is that not taking a property? Because you're taking the use of the property. The question is, what happens when you have a partial taking, like uh, the Wetlands Act that says you have to protect species so, of, of animal, so you, so you can't use your property to the full extent that you'd like? Uh, there, the, the answer is the uh, United States Supreme Court has made quite a mess of this area. Um, in fact, there, were, there was a, a case based in Michigan that, that uh, was a complete muddle. Uh, but the whole doctrine, at least coming out of the United States Supreme Court, is you have a bundle of rights, and uh, some can be withdrawn without there being a, a total taking requiring uh, comp compensation. Yes, sir? Go back to Michigan a little bit. What's the most pressing issues you feel coming up on your docket? Not a decision on it, but what are the pressing issues that are facing the other, than, other than this very important election. <laughs> no, uh, the question is, what, is the, what are the most pressing issues in, in Michigan? Yes, correct. Um, that are not necessarily uh, related to, to the court? Yes. Uh, isn't it how to avoid becoming the Mississippi of the 21st century? Well, I, I, this is a time for moral courage, certainly. Um, I, I mean, I, you're, I'm now talking as a public citizen. I, I'm very concerned. Uh, I've got two adult children. 